the database feature we've all been waiting for is finally here. It's mind blowing to me how far behind databases are in terms of incorporating themselves into developer experience. Honestly, it's kind of laughable. The things we have to do to work with a database and try to incorporate that into our regular development workflow. It's nuts. But this just got a lot better and significantly easier with this new workflow that Zeta, one of my favorite database options, just launched. And this is a direct integration between your code, your deployments on Vercel or Netlify and branches inside of Zeta so that it can automatically create and delete branches for PRs that you create where you can then use Vercel or Netlify previews to preview your changes inside of this deployed URL, which is getting data from the newly automatedly created branch inside of Zeta. It really is crazy. And this is exactly what we've been waiting for as developers. So let's go ahead and set this up using a Next.js project 13 plus, which is using server components and the app directory. And let's deploy this to Vercel so we can see all of this magic in action. All right, now I'm starting with a database inside of Zeta. Everything I'm doing in here is free. So you could sign up for your free account. You could uh, create your workspace and then create a database. And that's what I have here. Now this video is sponsored by Zeta. You'll see how awesome it is as we go through the video, specifically the workflow that we're, that we're highlighting. So hopefully you enjoy it. And if you have any feedback, let us know in the comments below. So I have a database here that is for a job. So, or a table that is for storing job records. So we have location, we have a link to the job. And I asked on Twitter for a couple of different uh, places that we're hiring. So here's a few different roles at Zeta, daily.dev and clerk.dev, three of my favorite companies that you should go and check out. Awesome companies to work for. There's the titles. And one of the things that I wanna do is create another property. And we'll do that in a second in a separate branch inside of Zeta. And then with this, we'll add a type property so we can have something like full time. So let's jump in and look at the code. Now we see an error in here because I'm trying to import this client from Zeta that's not created yet. I'll come back to that in a second. But inside of here, once we have a Zeta client, we can call our job table called get many. And then basically we just iterate through each of these jobs and display them. There's not very much here. But this is using the app directory inside of uh, Next.js 13. So this is using React server components as well. Basically what this means is it's going to do this query on the server and it's gonna stream those results to the front end after they're done. So it's gonna allow all of this to, uh, to be able to ship down to the browser to start and anything that's dependent upon the actual jobs that we query will get streamed down. If you wanna know more about React server components, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to do a dedicated video on that in the future. But with the code in place, let's actually do a quick search here for the Zeta CLI. So you'll need to have the Zeta CLI installed. I already have mine installed, but you can run this command here. So npm install dash G and then the, uh, the client there. And then from here, we can run our Zeta auth login. I've already done this before. Um, so I'm just gonna take the configuration that's there. And then I'm gonna run a Zeta init. This is gonna connect this project to the uh, Zeta database that I've already created. So in this case, it's asking which database do we want? I'm going to choose the JQQ job board. I want this to generate TypeScript code. This is one of the beautiful things about the TypeScript uh, SDK or the uh, package that Zeta has. The generation of the code gen is absolutely fantastic. So let's do that. Uh, we can put it inside of source Zeta. It's gonna run NPM install for the client. And we should see once this kind of refreshes, like this is gonna go away because we're able to import that. There it is from Zeta. Now what this did is it created uh, TypeScript types basically for our table. So we have the properties that you saw before, location, the link to the job, the company, the title, and we'll go and add that property in a second. Now two other things that it did, it created an environment variable file and then added our API key and then the branch that it's connected to. Now in this case, I want to switch this now to be a dev branch. So we wanna create a separate branch where we can do some testing and we want to connect to that. So let's come back into Zeta and under, under the branch tab, we can now create a new branch. So we can call this dev. Let's go ahead and create that branch. And inside of here, we can create another property. So this will be a string and the property will be type. And we want this to be required so it's not null. And then the default is full-time. So we're full-time, part-time, contract, et cetera. So we'll go ahead and create that column. Now, the only thing that's awkward in here, I haven't like prepared a CSV that I can import. So I'm just gonna generate random data. This is gonna look a little bit weird for the demo, but it's just dummy data, so stick with me. Uh, cool, so that branch exists. We are telling Zeta to connect to this branch. 
And now we want to pull the changes uh, to our schema from that specific branch. So inside of our terminal, we can run Zeta pull and we want to pull from the dev branch. So we started with main branch, we ran the code gen. Now we're pulling from the dev branch, which is going to run code gen again. And now you see that full time property showing. All right, now what we want to do is actually display that property. So I'm going to scroll down and just copy or duplicate the location line. So job.location. If we do dot in here, you can see we get IntelliSense based on those TypeScript types. Really, really nice to then come down and choose the type property. So let's run this just to make sure everything is looking OK. Again, it's going to look weird with this dummy data, but you'll see that with real data here in a second. So this should be running. Let's open up localhost 3000. And it's a basic job board here again, dummy data, but we have the link. We have this would be the type. This would be the location, the company and then the job title. All right, so let's take this to the next level. Let us go inside of Vercel and let's create a project in Vercel so that we can start to connect Zeta with our GitHub repo and with Vercel. So we're going to create the project in Vercel first. Uh, this may seem a little counter counterintuitive, but we're going to create this first and we're going to connect this to the Next.js Zeta job board. Now this is the uh, this is the project that already exists inside of GitHub. It's already a GitHub repo and we're going to deploy this. Now it's going to fail the first time because we didn't set any environment variables for our API key and which branch we're connecting to, etc. So this is going to go ahead and fail, which is fine. That's expected in a couple of seconds. And then what we're going to do is go to Zeta, add the integration to Vercel to connect it to this Vercel project. And Zeta will then go to Vercel and automatically upload all the variables that Vercel needs to be able to run our application. So that project just failed to build. But let's go to the project tab. So we'll have this open and let's go back to our Zeta table and we'll go over to the settings to be able to add this Vercel integration. All right, so we'll go into the Vercel integration here and we want to install this app, the Zeta app on Vercel. Say, yes, it can do these things. Select the scope. This is my personal account. And then the specific project that we want to work with, which is the job board that we just created. So we'll add this integration here and then we'll specifically need to make sure that it's connected. So we have the integration, but now we want to connect. And if we go back now to Vercel, Vercel is going to have our Close this tab. Let's go back to Vercel. Under settings and environment variables, Vercel now has these Zeta environment variables that we didn't have to do anything for. Specifically, it did all of that stuff itself. So if we go back to deployments, for example, we can redeploy this. So if we redeploy, that will now pick up the environment variables. And by default, it's going to connect to the main branch inside of Zeta. So this thing should be running based on uh, the code that's already in the main branch of GitHub. Remember, we're working in the dev branch in our code and the dev branch in our database. Uh, and then it's going to connect to the main branch inside of Zeta. Now, while that is happening, while that's building, we can go ahead and start to prepare this commit. So we can do a git add everything. We can git commit uh, added integration with Zeta. And we'll push that here in a second. So let's come back to that. Let's just see if this, uh, let's see this build finish so we can go and see the deployed application. It looks like it just did. And this is going to be available to us. This should be pulling from the main branch, which is why you see kind of the real data here. But keep in mind that you don't see the third property, which is the type of position of full time, et cetera. Again, because main branch and code connected to the main branch in Zeta. Going back to the database again to show you this main branch has real data. Dev branch has dummy data. OK, so let's go ahead and push these changes to our dev branch inside of GitHub. Now let's go over to GitHub. All right. And since we just pushed, I think it will ask us. Maybe it won't ask us automatically. Uh, we can now do a uh, PR. We'll create a new PR. And we'll create a PR from our dev branch into main and we'll go ahead and create that request. All right, so we'll create that pull request. Now, while this is happening, you're going to see a few things popping up. See that there is a Zeta thing going on and there's a Vercel thing going on. So you'll see Vercel is failing here and that's for a specific reason. It's because of timing. So we'll have to actually re-trigger this with one additional commit to make this work. But the most important thing to see here is that Zeta has gone ahead and automatically created a new branch for us. So let's go and look at that. So back inside of Zeta, we have now three branches, dev, main, and then preview James Q Quick dev. So James Q Quick is the workspace, dev is the branch, and this is saying this is a preview branch, which is pretty neat. 
Now, if we go into this, this is going to take the schema from our dev branch, but the data from the main branch. So it takes the schema from the code branch that you're looking to merge into the main branch. And then uh, the data is coming from the branch that you're merging into, if that makes sense. So what we should see here is that we have all of the properties, including type, but they each have uh, the real data, which is coming from main. This way you're actually testing realistic data inside of your preview. So let's go back to uh, inside of here, inside of uh, GitHub. Notice that this failed inside of Vercel. This is because Vercel is specifically looking to connect to that preview branch because Zeta has told Vercel, this is the branch that we're creating. Vercel, you should connect to that for this preview. The downside to that is Vercel is trying to run the build before that table is actually created. So what we can do is we can uh, change something small. So uh, I'm going to use my shortcuts in here. So we'll do uh, added or updated text, something small. And we just want to trigger a, uh, a push to that Git branch. So inside of our dev branch, notice that this will kick off now another building inside of our cell. That table inside of Zeta has already been created. So now the build inside of our cell can actually connect to that existing table because it already exists now inside of Zeta. So if we go back to Vercel and let's go into the deployments tab, we should see this thing as building. It's not failing yet. It should be connecting to the right branch, which is that new branch that was automatically created. We had nothing to do with. And in a second, we'll be able to see that this thing is live. I think it actually just finished. So let's go and visit this. And this should have the realistic data with the additional full-time or type property column showing inside of this visualization. How amazing is that, that this is all done for us with like minimal configuration, super, super cool. So the last thing we wanna show is if we go into our branch and do a merge of this pull request, let's merge this. So now the code and the scheme, so the code has been merged. Zeta will also do a database table migration. Uh, and so if we go back inside of here, if we look inside of uh, our branches, notice we only have two available. We no longer have preview. So if I try to refresh this, uh, this is going to show me basically that that table doesn't exist. If I go into dev, that still exists. If I go into main now, this has already been migrated where this has the property of type. So, so cool. This is what database integration should look like from a developer experience perspective. This is exactly what I've been looking for. I think this is what a lot of people have been looking for is a seamless way to integrate your database into your existing workflow with preview deploys inside of Vercel, with your automatic deployment set up, with branches set up so you're testing things safely and aside from your production data. So anyway, I think this is super cool. Let me know if you have any feedback, any thoughts on ways that they can improve this or things you'd like to see. I'm sure there would be all ears to hear your feedback, but I think it's pretty amazing. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the TypeScript types that Zeta can generate for you, I've got a video on that that you can check out so you can go and watch that one. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time.